Sharks of the corn. <sighs> Here we go. Welcome back to Unexceptional TV, the best place for the very worst of cinema. And today's movie is a great illustration of that motto. We've all seen a shark movie at least once in our lives, but the defining characteristic of all these movies is obviously the ocean, or large body of water that the sharks live in, which is what makes this shark movie instantly unique because it takes place in a cornfield, and in the low budget shark movie genre, which is extremely oversaturated, it's rare to get a movie that stands out like this one. The movie starts with a drunken couple having a picnic near a cornfield when they inevitably decide to play some striptease and some hide and go seek, but the husband is way too drunk and he blacks out halfway through, while the woman is getting rather annoyed and frustrated and she takes her bra off as well as other items of clothing and they must have paid her quite a bit of money. I'm assuming the director's thought here was like, how do I make my movie more enticing for the viewers? Well, what if we have a pair of boobs in chalk? The only boobs we can find are some 40 year old woman's boobs, but I'm sure people won't mind. It was very unnecessary, and she gets attacked by a shark while her breasts are bare. And uh, even after she's dead, the camera really makes a big deal of focusing in on the fact that her boobs are exposed. But all unnecessary nudity aside, we're then introduced to a serial killer shark cultist, the whole bag full. And he brings a prostitute into his room and she starts looking for all his collection of shark stuff when he attacks her with a shark's jaw and uses her as a sacrifice to his shark goddess. Now this isn't his first victim, he's actually killed countless women before and he's buried them all in the same cornfield. Back at that cornfield, the now ex-drunk husband of the now dead woman explains to the detective that he doesn't know what killed her, and he was completely drunk at the time, he had passed out, which leads the police to suspect him and his brother as being involved, and even says as much to the guy's face. Meanwhile in the forest somewhere, there's a couple of bandits that are making their way to a warehouse while avoiding different booby traps, and they find and steal this shark cultist artifact, the Sharky Fact. They escape the warehouse and it blows up behind them. They hand the Sharky Fact over to the guy in charge of the heist, but instead of paying them, he shoots them with a tranquilizer dart and drives off with the precious object. A different blonde police officer that she pulls over the serial killer shark cultist and arrests him when she sees there's a bunch of body parts and plastic, uh, I mean real body parts in the back of his car. And in the interrogation room, which is also a really, really good interrogation room, and he's got windows, I mean he's probably got a kitchen down in the other room, he's got a computer chair he's sitting on, if I'm ever interrogated by the police, I want to be there. The cultist serial killer spills the beans and says yes I believe in the goddess of the shark thingy thingy and yes I'd killed hundreds or sacrificed hundreds of, of victims to her and whatnot and I buried them all in this cornfield that I can show you where it is so they load him into a car and she starts driving and he gives a direction of where this burial site cornfield is. Meanwhile at the cornfield, the brother of the guy whose wife was eaten by the sharks when he was blackout drunk, he flies a drone over the cornfield for some completely unrelated matter and finds that there are actually sharks in the cornfield and he captures it on video. So he basically scrambles to try and say, hey, my brother is innocent, there's actually sharks in the cornfield that are attacking people. And obviously nobody believes him at first and so he tries to go out and prove that there are indeed sharks in the cornfield. The guy who actually stole this shark effect is now trying to sell it and he meets up with his buyer who is a mob boss and you obviously have the obvious characters in his gang, you got the little child, you got the annoying guy who keeps repeating everything, yeah the best actors in the game essentially and they basically tell him here's the money where is this artifact and he said he hid it somewhere so they wouldn't kill him and take it off him. So he gives them the map of where it is and the little child and the other person is sent to retrieve it but they get attacked by sharks which is confusing to everybody because they don't know there are sharks so they assume they're being double crossed so they basically open fire on each other and the guy runs off and the child and the other person is killed by the shark so they're assuming it's double crossed nobody is aware that sharks are actually in the cornfield. Meanwhile, people are dying from sharks in the cornfield every single day. There's a little kid playing near the cornfield, the frisbee goes into the cornfield, he goes to recuperate it, and he never comes out in one piece, let's say. And a bunch of stuff like that happens all the way around the, the cornfields, and so the police are really panicking, they're not sure what's going on, they're getting all these different reports, it surely can't be actual sharks in the cornfield. That wouldn't make any sense, so they're very slow in that regard. 
Either way, the woman who's transporting the serial killer guy to the cornfield where he buried his bodies picks up some other guy who was actually the guy who stole the shark effect and who failed to sell it what he managed he got the money and the shark effect so he's got both and he gets into a car and they drive off to Druid Hills where they're both going where this cornfield is and he later reveals that he's actually a undercover CIA agent and he's been investigating the shark court and he has the artifact but you know that this movie can't just keep it at one plot twist. You can't just know that this guy who we thought was a criminal was actually a CIA agent undercover. Now we actually have the cop who knocks him out because she is also part of the shark cult. And the prostitute that was murdered before was actually her sister. <laughs> what? And now she's on his side because they want to resurrect them. She, the, the sacrifices by resurrecting the shark goddess. They would resurrect all the victims and whatnot or something of that nature i don't really understand it i don't know it's just so ridiculous it's like the overuse of plot twists is just the destruction of the plot twist now the police woman and this uh serial killer cultist guy he is going to initiate the ritual to basically summon the shark goddess and basically instate a new world order of the fish people of the shark people i guess and uh, obviously they need to be stopped so the CIA guy who isn't dead obviously is just knocked out regains consciousness and bumps into the brother who's been basically trying to convince people that yes indeed there are sharks in the cornfield and he has a harpoon weapon to defend himself and he bumps into the CIA guy and basically exchange information and get each other up to date on the situation a bunch of people have died and obviously stuff is happening stuff is going down there they need to stop this uh, cultist guy from resurrecting the shark goddess they don't actually manage to stop them they do resurrect the shark goddess and i gotta give props to the costume department here this is some pretty good stuff <laughs> and it's really wacky but it's really cool uh for a very low budget movie i love the costumes for this the, the two sort of costumes here and uh it's really pretty impressive how you get through the entire movie it's like we gotta stop them from resurrecting this super powerful being and what do they do they shoot it with a harpoon and then they throw a grenade on top of her head and blow her up <laughs> it's over in five seconds flat this overhyped thing that's been going on for an hour and 40 minutes she's dead in five seconds after being resurrected <laughs> it's beautiful that's the movie in a nutshell. I really skipped over a bunch of stuff because this movie is an hour and 45 minutes long, which is way too long for this movie. It's way too long. There are many scenes that should have been cut, and because it was so unnecessarily uh, cluttered, it did feel really bad. The pacing was completely off. It didn't work very well at all. But there were so many different plot lines that all sort of came together at the end that sort of intertwined later on. It was very, very interesting for a low-budget movie. You never see that sort of impressive uh, multiple plot lines coming together in low budget movies usually it just follows a group of characters and it's a linear sort of thing but no this was quite impressive in that regard there was uh, quite a bit of stuff that really should have been cut but as it comes to a so bad it's good movie genre it is probably one of the better sharp movies i've ever seen i've been laughing my ass off basically for two days straight thinking about this movie it was just an amazing movie to watch if you're a fan of bad movies then you're going to love this one the very best shark movie i can recommend because they really played up the aspect of the cult and the you know the paranormal and it was actually linked to stonehenge somehow because you know they couldn't think of anything more mystical close to home so <laughs> so i mean northern england uh, yeah that's 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 what's causing this all the way in America. Okay, whatever. Let's not think too much about it. Either way, the acting in this movie was really bad on top of the ridiculous premises, obviously. A good recipe for a good movie, obviously. If you have really good acting in a plot that is terrible, it doesn't work. But if you have really bad acting in a plot that's really bad and a scenes and visuals are really bad, like the sharks, they're not visual effect sharks for the most part. They're actually just plastic like models. So it does... It works its own kind of harmony in the movie and it is kind of really, really fun and really funny. It doesn't seem out of place. It seems like a, a fun little comedic B-movie, which is perfect. It's exactly what it is. For my final thoughts on this really corny movie, it's not every day you see a very intriguing low-budget movie. Usually they're very straightforward, but I was really impressed by the quality of the script. There were so many different storylines, there was so much potential that was put into this story. 
And it's unfortunate that they couldn't elaborate on more of these different storylines, like the serial killer aspect wasn't really done very much at all. It was very surface level. You would have wanted to see more about the serial killer's past because he'd been killing for a long time before the sharks appeared in Corn. So it'll be interesting to see the police's reaction to some woman with her head chopped off with... Uh, um, well, maybe not specifically, but a woman injured by a shark jaw inland and being like, what the hell's going on here? And then having these different shark attacks coming up in the corner and thinking, maybe this is real. We found different evidence of it back in the day. So that's an aspect that wasn't done at all, but um, it had potential. And honestly, this movie was basically one of the betters. I, if I were to watch any sort or recommend any sort of bad movie to a beginner and lover of shark movies or somebody had seen Jaws, I'd recommend this movie. It really is it really is worth to watch. Even though it's a little bit too long, it should have cut down about 20, maybe in half now, could have been cut out of Dead Space and a lot of unused stuff. But uh, all in all, it was a great movie.